Oh, EX, man. definitely how you want to start on Yone decide. Here we go. Do we so, have the Kiawe, though? Takuya is running a deck centered around ho -Oh GX and the new supporter card, Kiawe. It allows you to search your deck for four fire energy and attach them to one of your Pokemon. It comes at the cost of ending your turn. But, I mean, if you're going first, who cares? Uh, you get to get four energy. You wouldn't be able to attack anyway. And here is the first Ultra Ball. Have to assume it's going for Tapu Lele GX, Wonder Tag, into that Kiawe. And we're going to see a fully powered Ho-Oh GX by the end of the first turn. This is by far one of the most aggressive plays available to uh, decks right now. We didn't see a ton of this in day one, but I've seen a lot more of it in day two. Now, a lot of players uh, I've seen, especially over in the West, they're running sort of like a Ho-Oh tech within the existing Volcanian deck. But uh, Yanita's deck seems to actually focus around the Ho-Oh, running three copies of it, along with other tech fire attackers like Volcanian, like Salazzle GX. Uh, so this is actually, uh, oh, there's a Turtonator GX in there as well. Yep. It is big fire, the deck. <laughs> Absolutely. And I have to assume we're going to kick things off with a bang with that Kiawe. And one thing on Ross's side, you see his starting Pokemon, Hoopa EX, and in his prize cards, the other Hoopa EX. That is a massive card for the Mega Rayquaza deck to be able to Scoundrel Ring for three Pokemon EX, put them in your hand. Uh, when he plays his first Ultra Ball and searches his deck, he's going to find some very bad news, and it's going to make his setup very difficult. And so here we see a Wonder Tag off of Tapu Lele. Ineta just looking through, uh, trying to make sure that he knows which cards are prized and which ones are not. But I can only imagine this ends with a Kiawe, this new supporter from Burning Shadows. Uh, part of the reason why the word burning is even in the name of the set. Uh, searching your deck for four energy cards and attaching them is absurd. But it does come at the cost of ending your turn. Yeah, <laughs> Takuya got ahead of himself a little bit. Uh, played Tapu Lele GX, used Wonder Tag, and started grabbing fire energy out of his deck. And Ross is like, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, he's like, oh, whoops, I forgot to actually grab the supporter. Uh, and probably a good thing he did, because he forgot to attach energy before that. But now, playing everything in the correct order, uh, attaching energy to his Salandit on the bench, and getting that big Kiawe for energy going on to ho -Oh GX on the very first turn. And that is fully loaded, ready to do 180 damage oh, on the I think second turn. Did the... Poke Salanda end up finding his way into the discard pile? What happened? Uh, I think one of the judges is just looking at Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, where'd it go? There's just a floating fire energy. So five energy in a single turn is uh, just is so dominant just to be able to start off that way. Uh, it's why, obviously, he's opting to run more Ho-Oh so that he can start with it and more likely run into the turn one Kiawe. Now, over on Ross's side, the question is, how do you respond you're missing one of your most important pieces, which is the ho uh, the Hoopa, and you're starting a Hoopa. Oh, he just passes. He's pretty much just going to concede this right away as long as he need to get away to move Ho. Here yeah, just a Flirt cards. Stone, and that is it. We'll see Phoenix burn for 180 damage, and that'll wow. be the game. But did I, he miss? I actually don't see a Float Stone. I don't even know if I see an energy. There is an Ultra Ball. Hey, he does play Floatstone and Switch in his deck, but did not find one here. He does play Shaman EX, though, so he could Ultra Ball for it here and set up and try to dig deeper and go for the win right here. Yeah, it's got a copy of Shaman in this deck. Uh, some people don't like running it, but in situations like this, if it can help you close the game right here, here's the time to do it. Puts down the Volcanion and evolves. evolves. Yeah. Here we go. Shut up. Getting four more cards, it looks like. So can he get away to Switch? That's all he needs. Float stone or switch, and it is game over. And there's switch. a switch. And Boom. just like that, turn two, Phoenix burn, 180 damage, knocking out this Hoopa EX. And Takuya Yoneda starts this match off with an easy win. Yeah, uh, heartbreaking if you're Ross. You're two wins in. You're looking good. Uh, your opponent even prized their tech card to stop your matchup, but that was just a horrible start. That's some of the downside that you can get to having Hoopa is it is a terrible starter. And uh, I can only imagine it's unlikely that he gets into this situation again. Typically, you want to be able to play that Hoopa turn one to set up. So uh, there's also a bit of a language barrier here. Uh, Tokuya's cards are in Japanese, and Ross might not be familiar with that Salazzle GX. So we have a translator over to uh, inform the player what the card actually does. And it uh, looks like... Yeah. 
one of our translators, Brian, yes. is uh, explaining to Ross what Celazel GX is, is doing here. <laughs> it's funny. It's uh, not a card that I see a lot in competitive play, but I do see it all the time on Pokemon Trading Card Game Online. A lot of players like to use uh, that platform as a way to test out you know, some untested cards or try out some other ideas. It's a decent fire attacker. It can really close a game because it hits yep. harder depending on how many prize cards you've taken. It can also discard energies, which is really strong. It's just, uh, it's like an interesting uh, little side attacker that you can work with in fire decks. Yeah, I think it's actually a pretty clever inclusion. So you start off with Ho-Oh GX, you do the Kiawe turn one, and uh, after that, it's hard to power up Ho-Oh GX. It takes four energy. You can afford to play Kiawe on your first turn. Not much else is happening. It probably won't get knocked out. But in the middle of the game, you can't just play a Kiawe and attach a bunch of energy and end your turn your opponent can probably deal with it and knock it out before you get a chance to attack with it. So you need something with a lower energy requirement. And after you burst out with Ho-Oh GX, take a couple prize cards, then Salazzle GX can come in and kind of clean up. Yeah, and it uh, only has a two energy requirement, so that's sort of your easiest way to work around it. Um, it yep. doesn't run any kind of like... Uh, vol oh, I guess he does have some Volcanian, or at least one Volcanian. Um, of the not EX variety, but otherwise you don't really accelerate a lot other in other ways. Indeed. So getting uh, set up. Max, Max Elixir, I guess, is the only other one. Yeah. Getting set up here for game number two in round three of the World Championships. Looks like Takuya has a mulligan here. Uh, let us know who you think is going to win. Use the hashtag PlayPokemon. And will Ross Coffin come back in this matchup after a devastating Turn two loss. Oh, a hoop prized again. Let's hope he didn't start it this time. <laughs> yeah, or will Takuya Yoneda close this out with his turbo ho -O GX and Kiawe deck? So if you, oh, well, we've got a ho start again. So I was going to say that's your one card that you really want to open just so that you have at least one to Kiawe to. Prize cards once again. Is Sudowoodo in the prize cards again? No. Not this time. That's going to be a huge roadblock uh, <laughs> for for Ross to run through. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, now Ross starting off game number two in a much better fashion. See the sky field. This will look much more like a Mega Rayquaza start, I think. So there we see uh, Mega Rayquaza is able to evolve immediately with that Delta Evolution trait. Uh, you are able to just immediately put it down. Normally a Mega Evolution would end your turn, but the Spirit Link tool attached to it uh, stops that from happening. Ross trying to draw as many cards as possible. Typically, you don't bench Dragonite in that way, but you just want more Pokemon on the bench, and you want to burn some cards so that you can shame him to draw a little deeper. Ugh, this is a horrible start for Ross. Uh, he has Professor Sycamore and two more Skyfield in his hand. He'll have to discard two of those stadiums, already putting another one, but doesn't even want to do it. He knows how important those stadium cards are in this matchup and knows he cannot afford to discard them. Little does he know his opponent plays Suda Widow, so those Skyfield won't even end up mattering in the end. Yeah, that's a pretty difficult choice when you're very early in the game and you are going to have to discard a lot of resources. Some players spend the turn one. This is like the second time I've seen it in casting today. They just don't even play the Sycamore to dig deeper. Instead, try and wait a turn. Maybe I will draw something. Maybe my opponent will have to play an N. But on Takuya's side, there's only one supporter he wants to play on turn one, and that's going to be Kiawe. That's right, he does start off with Ultra Ball, so at the very least he will be able to use Tapu Lele GX, Wonder Tag, and grab that Kiawe for another first turn, four energy turn. But it looks a little different this game. It's threatening when your opponent has a Mega Rayquaza. They could easily fill up their bench, get the Mega Turbo, the Double Colorless, all that stuff, and get a knockout. And I think Takuya recognizes this and actually goes for the Professor Sycamores instead of the Kiawe. That makes sense. Uh, also, maybe just trying to pull out the Sudowoodo as soon as possible to sort of limit his opponent from being able to bench more. Um, not just for the fact of more damage, but just because Ross already has three bench Pokemon down. And he also has other ways to still uh, attach energies in a fast pace. Here comes an energy attachment for the Max Elixir. Yeah, looks like powering up. Tapu Lele GX uh, never hurts to have some extra energy in play. And you never know when you need to use energy drive. So there we see a Sycamore. Also, uh, would obviously love to get some Salandit down as well. Just having more bench Pokemon so you can help 
set up the rest of your strategy. We'll see if we go in here. See Vulcanian. There's a uh, a sail end it. Yeah, so a much less explosive turn compared to game number one. Does not go for the Kiawe turn one. And now, Ross, what will he do? He still has the two Skyfield in hand. He still has Professor Sycamore. Uh, he even drew a Mega Turbo to make it worse. Another card he does not want to discard. This is just what can happen sometimes he with the Mega Rayquaza deck. You just have these hands where you have Sycamore and a bunch of stuff you can't afford to get rid of. And it looks like Ross... Staying patient, will this end up being the right play in the end? Yeah, and uh, Takuya just, just thinking like, wow, uh, I have a full another turn to set up. Yep. Hopefully there's no trick here. I don't think there is. Time for Kiawe. Here we go. Here come the flames. And just going to grab those three energy since ho -Oh GX already has one on it. And he's going to say, hey, if you're not going to do anything, I, I guess I'll just take my turn and pump up ho -Oh. And so here we see draw for Ross. What does he get? Looks like a float stone. Uh, I think he got a Shaman EX. Oh. So at least he can play down a couple cards, set up for one, and oh. hope to draw a non-Professor Sycamore card. Well, let's see. Uh, Guzma, Metal Energy, that, this just doesn't work. He's going to have to pitch it all. Yep. He's been holding back for so long, but now he just has to do it. Makes you wonder if he just should have done it in the first place. Yeah. Had, could have done this two turns earlier, essentially. Yeah, it certainly hurts throwing away those sky fields, but you just got to do it. Now, I'm sure he was looking for something like double colorless and a mega turbo so he could actually start hitting hard. I don't think he has anything like that yet. Yeah, he even had to discard a mega turbo off of that Professor Sycamore. So in these first two games, Ross has just not had anything go his way. Uh, game number one lost before he could do anything. Game number two, drawing a rough hand, he had to discard to Professor Sycamore. Can he even pull off an attack this turn? We're on, what, turn three? Turn four, even? Um, yeah, I think he's done three passes. Yeah. And we'll see what he grabs off this Ultra Ball. Probably going to see another Shaman EX try to set up for some more cards and maybe dig, try to get the knockout. Uh, he could grab Hoopa EX to just grab some more cards out of his deck, get some more Pokemon down onto the bench, so that if he does happen to pull off an Emerald Break, it'll be for a knockout. Yeah, and it looks like he's eyeing up the Hoopa right now, just trying to fill up the bench. This may be one of his few opportunities to do so uh, if Takuya has an easy access to the Sudowoodo. And knocking out a hoe with four Fire Energy is definitely something you do want to do. Uh, it'll be pretty hard to deal with the Rayquaza otherwise. Indeed, and I mean, Ho-Oh GX, you look at it at first glance, and you're like, wow, those attacks are so expensive. You know, for three energy, you do 50 damage somewhere. That's not a great rate. Four energy, you do 180 damage. That's, that's a ton of damage, but four energy is just so difficult to power up. Um, but then you have Kiawe in the mix, and it's like, oh, well, maybe that's actually pretty good after all. Huh, so we actually see uh, Sudowoodo coming down on Ross's side. Why not uh, try and block out? Yaneda from benching. Trainer's mail. Tools. Does he find Mega Turbo? I don't think I see it, but it's hard to tell from the angle. I gotta think he would have slammed it down right away. Just a spirit link off the trainer's mail. And I uh, wonder, does he have any prize shaman? Is it uh, reasonable to actually dig for the fourth one? <laughs> I certainly would if, uh, if it's not in your prize cards. He does have the Spirit Link now. He could uh, Mega Evolve once again without ending his turn. So we see Ultra Ball pitching all kinds of more resources, trying to dig back in. Let's see what he pulls out. Maybe this time we'll see Hoopa EX uh, to search for the Mega Rayquaza EX just to get more cards out of his deck so he can find that ever-important Mega Turbo to power up that Emerald Break attack right here. Yeah, that's kind of a brutal thing is over those turns he was passing, he wasn't even able to throw an energy in. Uh, he had an opportunity to, but threw it to the discard pile instead, figuring I can get a Mega Turbo for it later. And here we do see Shaman EX number four. We've seen a lot of setup so far, a lot of cards drawn, but not the right ones. Will the fourth and final Shaman EX be 
exactly what he needs to get that Mega Turbo and get the crucial knockout on this ho -Oh GX. So we see Spirit Link coming down. That way he can Mega Evolve, burn his hand down even more. Magirna coming down. Is this going to be a Shaman for six? It looks like it might be with that Sky Field. He has eight bench spots. And number eight is Shaman EX. Does he find the Mega Turbo? It's Mega Turbo or Bust here. Let's see. I don't know if I see it, but it's hard to tell the way his cards are bunched together. I don't think he has it. I think Ross would have played it right away if he had drawn it. And wow, what a big oh, miss. He brutal. drew so many cards this turn between Professor Sycamore, Shaman EX, another Shaman EX. Drew a six off that last setup and just could not find the crucial Mega Turbo to power up his Mega Rayquaza EX. And now he has to pass the turn. Yeah, not sure what you can even do at this point. You filled your bench entirely up to eight. You drew as many cards as you could. Now you sort of have to take this really frustrating attack from Ho-Oh. Yeah, yeah and uh, if Takuya can get two Volcanion EX out and do a double steam up, we're going to see a Phoenix burn for a knockout or even a single steam up plus a choice band that can hit for incredible amounts of damage. Can he pull it off and get a knockout? Oh, oh. here's the Sudowoodo. Ross is now roadblocked. Uh-oh. That means he can only have four benched Pokemon. This cripples his Emerald Break strategy. Yeah, it, it puts you in a bad spot in two ways. One is that immediately it's going to limit your bench size down to four, even though you have the Sky Field opening it up to eight. But also, if you want to stop it, you have to take a one prize knockout on a pretty irrelevant attacker uh, on your opponent's side. It just, it, it's the Rayquaza counter card. Yeah, and this is one of the reasons why this Mega Rayquaza deck has kind oh. of fallen out of favor. And oh my There's goodness. There's the Choice Band Steam Up. Oh, Takuya is on a roll. Yeah, this could be a game almost as quick as the first. Phoenix Burn for the two prize knockout. And yeah, this is why Mega Rayquaza decks kind of have fallen out of favor. There's just so many counters. First, it was the Parallel City limiting your bench to three. That was a stadium card, though, so you could counter it and still not be completely destroyed. Now we have this Pokemon that sits on the bench and actively limits your bench size for the entire game unless you knock it out. And this Pseudo Widow with Roadblock, it's not a card many people play. The only reason you really play it is to counter this Mega Rayquaza deck. But I think after yesterday's tournament, players saw that a lot of Mega Rayquaza decks made it through the field into day two. So they started adding this Pseudo Widow back to their deck and it is paying dividends for Takuya Yoneta here. Yeah, you get a lot of mileage out of it for just a single card. This is sort of one of those examples where we talk about you have just a few deck slots in about any deck that you play that you can dedicate to tech attackers or tech support Pokemon. And here, this is the perfect tech for this matchup. I think that's a good eye on basically this field. Mega Rayquaza was not as popular in tournaments such as like the North American International Championships, but we saw a lot of it day one here. Yeah, and we do see an N from Ross. Uh, just trying to figure out how in the world does he come back from this spot. He's staring down fully powered ho -Oh GX. Uh, it can't use the attack in consecutive turns, so he is potentially safe there. But even if he powers up his Mega Rayquaza EX, he's doing less damage than that basic ho -Oh GX. He can only max out at 120 damage now with Emerald Break. And it's just... Where do you go from here? How do you possibly mount any offense against your opponent? I guess this N is a good start. Perhaps you uh, choke your opponent off of resources for a little bit, but how do you even get knockouts? Yeah, do you waste a, essentially waste a turn uh, picking off the Sudowoodo on your opponent's side? That's something you're sort of forced to do so that you can finally get one-hit knockouts afterward? Yeah, and when you do that, then you just open up the response of steam up and then you have the choice band already and it's just another one hit knockout from ho -Oh gx and here uh actually just opting to do the uh 50 damage to the bench why not uh you aren't limited from attacking like some of these attacks do you just can't use phoenix burn in back-to-back -back turns that is correct and that sacred fire will set up a knockout from phoenix burn if the mega rayquaza comes out it looks like Tukuya just has complete control of this game Look, he almost looks bored, like, where's the real competition? <laughs> That's sometimes, this is uh, how games can go. He basically has teched this deck out so that it can destroy Mega Rayquaza, and right now, he is destroying Mega Rayquaza. I do think Indeed. this matchup is completely different if Ross is able to hit that Mega Turbo, though. Uh, but 
when yeah. you're playing against an opponent that literally can't announce an attack, yeah, the game gets a little bit easier. <laughs> yeah, so we do see Skyla from Ross. Uh, I don't even know what trainer card can really help him here. Finally getting that Mega Turbo, but I mean, he's got so many Pokemon in the discard pile. He doesn't have bench space to do anything. Uh, even if he manages to get an attack off, he just immediately gets knocked out. What are you supposed to do? Yeah, it's, uh, it's so brutal. You have to pass your first three turns, and your opponent to sort of hit this breaking point where they have seven energy on their field, you have one. It is, uh, <laughs> it's just almost impossible to come back. The only thing I could think of is, like, hope that you don't get knocked out, or hope that your Rayquaza doesn't get knocked out, and then pull up Sudowoodo next turn. It's just, he needs so much and has so little time to do it. Yep, so he's going to power up that Mega Rayquaza on the bench. Uh, one thing he can do is set up a turn where he plays Hex Maniac to turn off the roadblock and then fills his bench to get a big Emerald Break attack. But he is leaving himself wide open here. If Takuya just has a Guzma or Lysander here, he could get oh. a knockout, but just continues to pick away at that Mega Rayquaza. And it's funny, uh, I see on Ross's side, he has the Lysander. This is one of those situations where a Guzma would actually be more helpful. Probably. Uh, so we're also approaching for Takuya, the, the area of the game where Salazzle GX starts to become relevant. Uh, it can do more damage for each prize card you have taken. And if he takes four prize cards, for example, it'll do 200 damage. You slap a choice band on, that can do 230. So he just has this wide array of strong fire Pokemon all working together. And uh, one big thing for ho -Oh GX that sets it apart from things like Volcanion EX, it actually has a different weakness. Typically, your pure fire deck is weak to water, so you struggle against a lot of these water decks. But ho -Oh GX has a weakness to lightning, and that just gives you more versatility. Even though you're running all the same type, you have different weaknesses that you can use these different Pokemon in different matchups. Yeah, and I believe uh, ho -Oh has resistance as well, right? Yeah, to fighting. fighting. I know fighting isn't as popular right now, but still something that can also help out in various matchups. Uh, it's just, a, in general, it's a strong attacker. It has a great niche role as sort of this powerhouse in the opening of the game. Salazzle has a great niche role as a powerhouse in the end of the game. They provide a great one-two punch. Yeah, this is essentially the Burning Shadows deck. Oh. Uh, all these new cards, ho -Oh GX, Salazzle GX, Kiawe coming from the latest expansion and Takuya taking full advantage of it. So we do finally see a Guzma over on Ross's side. So he's able to knock out the Sudowoodo for now. Uh, that could give him an opportunity to follow up next turn. That said, he had to <laughs> discard so many Pokemon and oh boy. Super Rod just shuffles Sudowoodo back in. Super Rod being Super Sudowoodo back in. Does he have a card that can pull it out like Ultra Ball? Tapu Lele can probably find a card like Ultra Ball, or <laughs> not like Ultra Ball, but something that could search his deck or yeah, draw probably more just cards. Grab Sycamore, yeah. draw seven, probably draw into the Pseudo Widow. At this point, though, Tukuya almost wins on board. Uh, he can just energy drive with Tapu Lele GX for the knockout, saving his Ho GX and uh, his potential future Salazzle GX. Uh, waiting in the winds, and there is the Salazzle GX in hand, so he can kind of set up a board state that's like, so you can't deal with all of these, I'm going to get my last knockout. He has three different GX attackers, all with the ability to get knockouts on a uh, EX or GX on Ross's side. This is almost like uh, overkill. He has a complete endgame, dominant position. Indeed, you see on the screen the diabolical claws with Salazzle GX. And we're right here, we're just going to see the energy drive, 100 damage, plus 30 from the choice ban. So those sacred fires really paying off earlier. And now what can Ross do? He has no mega evolution on the board. He has just no energy in play, He's staring down a bunch of attackers. And now that Salazzle GX even represents a game-winning attack with the choice ban, Diabolical Claws can knock out any EX or GX in his deck. And I think Ross is just realizing he's essentially been checkmated here. Yeah, the only card that really... Yep, and there we see, checkmate. Wow. The only thing I could think of that can sort of help you spur comebacks with this deck is playing Dragonite, but the Dragonite's already down. Uh, there was just 